Hey guys! Hope you're ready for another 2D to 3D workflow. In this three-parter, we'll be taking you through the process of designing a 2D line art sheet in Clip Studio Paint, bringing that sheet into Blender, and through modeling and unwrapping, create some stylized medieval houses. What are we doing with these houses, you ask? Well, we'll be showing you how to import these assets into the material library in Clip Studio Paint, and demonstrate how they can be used as reference. Later on in the series, we'll be creating a few prop variations and eventually put them together to create a large-scale 3D environment in Clip Studio. Let's get started. Okay, let's start drawing our texture reference sheet. I'll be roughly sketching my ideas with the lighter pencil subtool. For our purposes, it's important at this stage to keep things simple and clear. As I'm sketching, I'm paying attention to the layout of the page as well. I need to leave enough room between the different elements to make sure we don't get any unintentional overlaps later on. I don't need to get into too much detail just now, but I'll be hinting at some of the texture work that will happen later on. Even though I'm just drawing very simple ideas for a door and a window, I still want them to have some personality and that added texturing and detailing is going to give them that personality. I'll be jumping into Clip Studio Paint's assets library right now to find a window to help with my drawing. As you can see, there are a lot of options to choose from here. Once I've found something that I like and I've hit download, I can scroll down in the material window to the download folder and find it in there. I just drag and drop it into my scene and now I can add this to my drawing. It is also important to create elements that can be seamlessly repeated if possible. For example, as I'm drawing the tile texture, I'm making sure the right side of this drawing can match the left side, if this was to be repeated one after another. As you can see, I copy and paste the end of the right side on a new layer, then move it to the left. I bring up the Hue Saturation Luminosity dialog box so I can change this layer's color. That will help me tell the layers apart. Then, I make sure the left side of the texture matches seamlessly. As for other areas such as this old brick wall part that I'm sketching, I'm leaving the edges non-descriptive so as to avoid any hard edges that might look unnatural. Alright, I think I'm happy with these sketches, so I'm going to knock back the opacity of this layer, then create a new layer to start drawing the clean line art. I'm going to use a pen subtool for this part. Clip Studio Paint has a great variety of pen subtools that you can choose from, and if you want to, you can tweak their settings by clicking on this button right here to get different variations on them. For this part, I'll be sticking to G-Pen Subtool, as I really like the feel of it and its crisp quality. Now, I'll be just taking my time and inking over the sketches. I'm going for a simple and bold graphic look here. I want these to read well from a distance without too much detail. As I'm getting ready to call this part finished, I'm zooming out to make sure the different elements are spaced out from each other enough. I also check to see if any of my line work needs extra line weight added to it. And here is the final reference sheet. With this done, we are ready to move on to the next part. I'm going to hand this over to Christina now. In order to get Omer John's reference sheet into Blender, we first need to create a 3D base. Just a box will do for now. Create a new material and if we bring up a new window and navigate to shader mode, just make sure you have object chosen and not world, we can drag and drop in our material and connect it to base color. Let's navigate to the UV editing layout up here and your box should automatically be unwrapped. If it isn't, just select some faces and hit U to unwrap. As you can see, the box is already using the reference sheet. If you're not seeing the sheet on your left, just make sure to find the image in the drop down menu. Back in layout mode, I'm ignoring the texture sheet for now and modeling a low poly house using the tools you're seeing on screen. And there we go! Once we're happy, let's head back into the UV editor. 
If we now start selecting faces and hit U to unwrap, we can move those faces around on the left and fit them to wherever we want them on the sheet. It's so great that we get feedback in real time. That just makes this whole process so much fun. If you ever want to add more three-dimensionality to your model, you can always use a knife brush to cut out parts and by selecting that face, you can extrude inwards and outwards. Also, just make sure you have no unwrapped areas that go outside of the UV bounds. If you need to check this, either press A while hovering over the viewport or press this little button. And there we go. Once you're happy, export the building as an FBX. If you want to use a professional tool to bake the textures to a new map, I highly recommend you check out this video back on our channel. And in the Clip Studio Modeler, which you can access through the launcher, create a 3D object and under the little tree node, import your model using Add From File. And our model comes in fully textured. Make sure to capture a thumbnail and head over to File and Register as New Material and choose a relevant name and place for the 3D asset. Back in Clip Studio Paint, if we now navigate to that very same place in the library, we'll find our 3D material and it will always be available to us. Okay, let's bring in our lovely new building material. Look at that! Isn't she gorgeous? We can use this as a base for a series of concepts, as a background element, or even as part of a larger city scene. You can move it around and rotate it just like every other material. And you can bring in more of these buildings if you'd like to build a town or something. If you feel like your buildings are not on the same level, just click on this icon right here to make sure your asset is placed on the ground plane. Clip Studio Paint also lets you adjust the lighting on your model if you like. With the Object Subtool under Operation Active, make sure your 3D material is selected. On the lower left of the screen here, you should see this Tool Property window. Click on the Ranch icon over here and then navigate to the Light Source tab. And now, all you have to do is click and drag on the sphere to adjust your light source. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Alright, let's draw some ideas. I add a layer filled with light grey and knock its opacity down. Then I create a new layer to draw. This is like putting a tracing paper over your drawing and then sketching on top of it. If you need extra help with perspective as you're drawing, right click on this ruler icon with a red X on it, then choose show ruler. And now, we got a perspective grid that matches our asset. The blue lines are locked, but if you want, you can click on these white dots on the purple lines and move them around. They are locked to their vanishing points, so there's no risk of you messing up the perspective guide. Okay, let's try a different idea now. I'm just going to draw for a while, add some assets and then keep drawing. Remember, if you need to add any additional things like wooden crates and such, you can find these in Clip Studio Paint's asset library. After spending some time drawing, erasing and drawing again, here's my final sketch. Just like what I did last time, I'm going to put another grey filled layer on top with low opacity, then start my inking on a new layer. This time, I'll be using the real G-Pen subtool. Saying it like that sounds a bit weird, like the previous subtool was fake or something, but Anyway, this is just a slightly more textured version of what I've used when I was doing the texture sheet. I thought this textured look might, you know, bring in a nice quality to the final illustration. Some parts of the asset, like the door over here, might end up looking a little bit flat from certain angles. So in the end, I ended up having to draw over it a little bit to give it more dimension and depth. For the background, I have used a layer set to color blending mode to give the whole scene an overall mood. This way, I can retain the look of the assets without having to paint over them too much. This is what I'm going to try to do as I progress further with my painting. I'll be using layer blending modes that are going to provide non-destructive results. For the characters, I have their silhouettes masked out on separate layers. Then. 
When I want to paint on top, I create a new layer, then right click on the layer window, select clip to layer below to make sure whatever I'm painting on the new layer stays within the boundaries of the silhouettes. You can also make use of layer blending modes such as soft light and screen to add light and atmosphere while retaining the detail underneath. Multiply blending mode will help you add more shadows and darker values in a non-destructive way. And here's the final illustration. As you can see, with the help of the 3D assets, I was able to add a lot of detail very quickly into the scene. Different layer blending modes help me retain that detail while adding color, light and atmosphere. The rest is just spending some extra time to refine the piece further. And that's about it! To summarize, in this video we explored how by using a simple texture sheet created in Clip Studio Paint, we could create any kind of building structure in Blender and use the texture sheet to texture and guide our 3D model's design. Finally, we exported that model to the Clip Studio Modeler software in order to permanently add the building to the Clip Studio Paint library. And of course, how this can be super useful when creating sequential art, concept art, illustrations, and so on. In part two, we'll explore how to use this very same technique for a more advanced fountain model. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye!